Hey guys, um, just getting back to y'all with my uh, BCT or basic combat training video for y'all. Um, this is going to be specifically for the Army, so if you're not joining the Army, skip on to the next uh, group of videos for whatever it is that y'all are going to for training. Um, I've got a list of stuff for y'all uh, to go over. Uh, hopefully this video doesn't get too long, but there's a lot to cover. So just bear with me, but this is going to be pretty in-depth for basic training. So um, Also, I'm going to hit on a lot of points for females. Um, I'm going to try my best to be inclusive for males as well. Obviously some things apply to both, but I'll be talking a lot more about the female side of things. So um, yeah, we'll just jump into it. Um, number one on my list is shark attack. So I know this is probably one of the most uh, searched things that uh, you probably want to look up before you go to basic training. Um, it's one of the most talked about things anyways. Um, basically, we got there on our bus. Each bus was full uh, and separated by platoons. I was in second platoon, so um, everyone on my bus was actually in my platoon, and then our senior drill sergeant was actually on the bus with us, but of course you don't realize this firsthand, so um, looking back on that, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but um, that's how my company did it. Um, basically we got there, and our drill sergeant was like, okay, y'all have five seconds to get off our bus. Of course he said it a lot meaner than that, he was yelling, um, and you see all the other drills, you see a company commander out there um, and whoever else works for the company out there waiting on you and there's pretty much like a like a sidewalk that we ran up with cones like kind of like leading us and we had our personal bag like our black duffel bag on then we had our green duffel bag on with all of our issued uniforms and everything, our boots and everything um, had our PCs on, all that kind of stuff. So my thing that I messed up on was I didn't lace my boots tight enough uh, the morning I was getting ready. So we were at reception and then about mid-afternoon, I want to say three, two or three o'clock in the afternoon, that's when our buses came to pick us up to transport us to uh, our company. And I had not laced up my boots, so make sure, and they'll tell you like the day before that, that you're leaving, when you're leaving. So make sure you lace up your boots really well. That seems like a no-brainer, but um, you get distracted and you're in a hurry, so make sure you do that, especially the day you're leaving. Um, they're really heavy, so mine were like falling off the whole time I was trying to run. Uh, or at least they felt like they were. They didn't come off, but um, it, it made it a little bit harder. Um, it was pretty warm that day. It was a couple days after Thanksgiving, and um, it was still pretty warm in Missouri. Um, we were in a PT bubble, which is just like this dome-looking structure with like a white tarp-looking thing, like roof over it, and then it's got shredded tire for like the flooring in there, um, and then it's got like a random like ventilation system in there. So it was pretty nice. We were in the shade at least. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of screaming, um, and then they kept us separated by platoon once we got in the PT bubble, and there was uh, a drill sergeant up on a platform, and he had a megaphone, and he was like telling us what to do, and so we would have to like run in place, we'd have to hold the, uh, a duffel bag up over our heads. I actually got yelled at a few times because the bag was so long, and then I they told you to hold the straps on the ends of them that it was sagging and like my arms were locked out but it was so long it was like sagging so um, I guess eventually they realized that I was doing like the best I could and they left me alone but a lot of people um, were sucking pretty bad and they were really tired and so they like pulled their bags off of them like away from them and they like threw all their the PT bubble like all that stuff that we just worked so hard to pack up got thrown around everywhere um, and so then you have to like run and like go get all your stuff put it back in your bag and then get back in formation and like do what everyone else is doing um, there was a lot of like squatting so we'd have to like hold our duffel bags and like squat um, it felt like it lasted forever and this is gonna feel like it's so weird because day zero 
um, when you first get there, it's called day zero. It feels like that day is never going to end, or at least it did for me. And now I think back on it, it's a little fuzzy. Like, I don't know if I blocked some parts out because it got so bad. Um, I don't know, but I do remember Shark Attack. So, that was pretty much it. There's just a lot, to, a lot of screaming. You don't know where you are. You don't know which building is your company. Um, we were surrounded by Delta 210, and, like, our company was Delta. So, um, yeah, we... Our, company was like right in front of us the whole time but you're like really like discombobulated like you don't know where you are so um and you don't know what's gonna happen next either the drills introduce themselves uh like getting smoked and everything and they introduce themselves um really quickly and then they told us to run outside to like this field and we were separated by platoon again and um our drills were telling us to dump out all of our stuff so we dumped out our green duffel bag and they took our black duffel bags with all of our personal items like our civilian clothes and they ended up storing them in closets downstairs on the main floor of our company so all that stuff is locked up um, and no one can get to it except for a drill sergeant so uh, you don't really have anything to worry about if you have like valuables or whatever um, they'll stay locked up so don't worry about that um, but yeah they uh, they made us account for like every item that was supposed to be on the list, like all all of our socks, all three pairs of the boots that we had, all of our uniforms, wet weather gear. No, actually, I take that back. You don't get wet weather gear till later on. Um, but just everything you get in reception, like all your PTs and stuff, that has to be accounted for when you get there. If you don't have that stuff, or like you lost it somehow, like within the time frame that you're at reception, which if you lose something at reception, you're doing something wrong. But um, if you didn't have it, I don't know what really happened. I guess you just tell your drill sergeant and they, I don't know, eventually you'll be able to go buy it again. I don't know. Um, side note though, everything that you got that was issued to you has to go with you to AIT. You have to have exactly six pairs of like white socks for PT. You have to have exactly like six pairs of green socks exactly like I think we got like three OCP uh, like top tops and bottoms like everything that you get issued you have to have all that with you and accounted for when you get to AIT so do not lose any of your stuff during basic training write your name on and Sharpie um, keep up with it keep your stuff locked up um, and then I'll get into like keeping your stuff secure later on because that's a really big deal um, so that, that was pretty much it. We ran upstairs after we got all our stuff accounted for. The females had to go all the way up to the third floor, um, which was a hike for us, and we had our own bay. So again, they keep you separated, male and females are separated. Uh, there were 76 females when we got there, um, and then the rest of the company was males. So it's 76 females, and then everyone all together was 256. So, there were a lot more males and females, but still, like, the females that get there are, like, really tough. They usually want to be there. Um, usually, we have a pretty strong attitude. <laughs> uh, we're pretty hard-headed. Um, that's just, like, the personality you get when you come to the Army and you meet a lot of females. Some females were really sweet and really soft-spoken. Like, the, the roommate that I had from MEPS that ended up shipping with me, she's a sweetheart. Um, she's she's kind of shy. Um... But she really like came out and actually turned into a really great leader towards the end. Um, and I, I knew she would be like that type. But, um, you know, you kind of like figure out how you need to act and how you need to be while you're there. Um, and that just means like growing a thicker skin for some people. So um, she did really great though. I've been pretty outspoken my whole life. Um, I've been called like aggressive, um, dominant, uh, like rude. Um, <laughs> outspoken very forward and that's just like my tough personality so I kind of like felt uh, like at home in the army as far as like personality wise um, because a lot of females go in there and they're really outspoken and that's something that I am so it was it was cool um, but we'll get into like females and like attitudes later um, once we got assigned to our bunks uh, I really don't remember what else happened that day, to be honest. 
Um, I'm sure we got smoked. We, we at one point ended up in our war bay with our platoon. So when you report to your war bay, it's males and females mixed together. All platoons are co-ed. Um, and that's just the people that you're going to be working with a little bit more closely than the rest of the company on a daily basis. So everyone that's in your platoon, try and treat them with respect and be nice to them. Um, don't like yell at people, don't be ugly. Uh, we had a lot of like uh, work to do in, in second platoon as far as like uh, respecting others and following the rules. A lot of people didn't want to like stand and just be quiet, like toes on line and be quiet. Um, and so other people would, like yell at them, they would like start cussing them out. Um, and that just makes everyone want to start fighting. So, um, just kind of like do what you think you're supposed to do and lead by an example. And that way, if you do try and correct someone, you're already doing the right thing so they can't really say anything back to you about it. Um, that was just like something that you had. It's just like teamwork building skills. It's, it's all it is. So, um, the smoke session. So number two, smoke sessions. Uh, those are crazy. Um, I know y'all probably heard all about smoke sessions. Um, you get smoked pretty bad for like the whole time you're in red phase. So there's red, white, and blue phase. Once you get to white phase, the end of like white phase, you're like doing all right. You get a little bit more extra time to like get ready in the mornings. There's not as much yelling. There's not as much smoking going on. Um, you kind of like know how you're supposed to act. You know how you're supposed to address people. Um, so yeah, but smoke sessions do occur throughout the whole time you're there. Um, there was actually a male that ended up getting smoked on graduation day, like graduation morning. I don't remember what he did. I think he just spoke out of turn. Um, and he like get, ended up getting smoked for like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, in front of the whole company in his dress blues <laughs> so um but yeah they're pretty intense lots of half jacks lots of um eight count push-ups our drills loved eight count push-ups um so get used to doing those um half jacks i'm telling y'all we did i'm not even exaggerating because they make you count out loud we did no less like if if we had really screwed up we did no less than sets of um like 80 and then we do something else, and then we do another set of like 80 half jacks. Um, eight count push ups really sucked. I remember one time we got up to maybe like 30 or 35 of those. And that gets really hard when you're like in your OCPs with your boots. Sometimes, like, sometimes we were wearing like our waffle gear. Um, so it got really hot. <laughs> but um, yeah, smoking is pretty bad. Try to just do the right thing and like keep your mouth shut. Someone Wait, shut your mouth. Shut, shut your mouth. Um, and you should be okay. So, yeah, there's that. Um, I would also say uh, go ahead and work on push ups while you're at home. I'm going to talk about the PT test later, but just get out of the way. Push ups are super important. If you suck at running and you suck at sit ups, you'll get better at those while you're there. Um, and you'll definitely get better at push-ups too. You'll get better at everything, but like push-ups are incorporated in the smoke sessions a lot. So if you're good at push-ups or if you've got that muscle memory and you've built up your muscle and your back and your shoulders, you won't get as tired and it won't be so bad for you if you already are used to doing a lot of push-ups. So do that. Um, Number three is how to speak to a drill sergeant or pretty much anyone higher ranking than you that's not a trainee in your company. Um, there are certain ways to address uh, officers. Um, Y'all are welcome to look those up. It's always sir or ma'am for an officer. Never call a drill ser sergeant sir or ma'am. You done messed up, A.A. Hey, hey, Ron! Never. They take offense to that. They're not a sir or ma'am. They're a non-commissioned officer. They're an NCO. So they have, they don't have, they don't get to use that title. It's not sir or man for them. Don't I know? Like it, a lot of people get in the habit of saying yes sir, no sir when they're trying to be respectful. You have to pay attention to what you're saying and call them drill sergeant. That is their first and last name. That is the only thing you can call them. Also, never address the drill sergeant by their actual last name. Uh, 
we had a lot of people that would go around when they were talking about a specific drill sergeant and they wanted to say their name, they would say drill sergeant uh, so and so. Never say that because someone's always listening and if a drill if another drill sergeant hears you saying that, it you're like done. So um you can the way we got around that was like uh I don't know, like the female drill sergeant in third platoon. Like that and then everyone would know who we were talking about. So like try and like uh say that instead. Um you always are supposed to ask for permission to pass, so it's drill sergeant, specialist Kirk requesting permission to pass or something along those lines um, you might want to look up like the specific term if you want to like really remember it but it's something like that like so like in chow uh, you know they'd be like getting on to somebody about something and then you would have to like walk through them because it gets kind of crowded in there so you would stop and say that and then um, you know they would say like go on or and you go on but you never want to like walk past a drill sergeant like in front of them like cut their path of walking off without asking like stopping and asking permission first um also if you know you screwed up uh you like did something stupid you said something stupid what did you're you just, just coming off stupid um like you got an attitude or you like rolled your eyes just being like a civilian like in a civilian mindset um, and they ask you like why you did that or like what's your problem why you have an attitude or like wh why did you say that just say like no excuse drill sergeant and just leave it at that you don't want to try and like justify yourself you don't want to try and just no excuse drill sergeant like four words those will save you and they'll most likely just I don't know either leave you alone just to call you stupid and they'll leave you alone or whatever. I got called a dumbass one time because I asked, <laughs> I asked the drill sergeant a question. Um, I don't know, like, I was on fire guard. Apparently, like, it was like 10, 15 minutes before lights on and um, they have alarms on the doors for each bay. So if someone is sneaking around at night, they're going to know it's a silent alarm. And I guess one of the females accidentally, like, bumped the door. Um, going to the latrine and uh, it set off his alarm he ran upstairs he knew it was the female base so he came right up to us and I was the last one on fire I was like the last shift for fire guard and he asked me uh, what happened and I had no idea I was standing right by the door but I had no idea that someone had bumped it um, because it was so subtle I couldn't even tell that it was cracked or open or whatever uh, so I asked him, you know, what time did the alarm go off, drill sergeant? I, I'm not aware of this situation. Um, I was trying to like own up to the fact that I had no idea. I wasn't just gonna make up some like bull answer. And he was just like, I'm asking the questions here, at, uh, dumb or some shit like that. I don't know, but um, just say like no excuse, um, and you'll be okay usually that's the answer they're looking for because they don't want you to have excuses if you mess up. You just need to own up to your mistakes. Um, uh, so Blue Falcons, I won't say the actual word, words on here, the phrase on here, but Blue Falcons, um, if you're someone who sees somebody that needs a battle buddy, um, just be nice and just go help them out. It might be a pain, it might be like interrupting something that you're doing, but if you see someone that really needs a battle buddy and no one else is willing to go with them, especially in the beginning because no one knows everyone, um, later on you'll start to make friends and like you'll be able to like go up to a couple people and ask them that you're like closer to, but especially in the beginning if someone's like, hey I need a battle buddy, just go with them. Just make sure you're in proper uniform and just go and just help them out. Um, and then later on, I guarantee you, you'll need a battle buddy for something. They'll be more willing to help you out. Um, don't do the wrong thing either. Just do the right thing. No matter if someone's watching you or not, just do the right thing. I can't tell you how many times females were out of, uh, out of uniform in the Bay Area like they're not supposed to be. And a drill just walks in. They just walk in. You call 
at ease really loud whenever a drill enters the area and you're supposed to freeze um, and go to parade rest um, so if you're standing there in your sports bra uh, it's gonna be really obvious so like I don't know you get caught wearing uh, like if we had our boots off we had our OCPs on and we had our boots off and we were trying to make it to the shower and we had our shower shoes on with our OCPs uh, walk, like walking towards the latrines to go to the shower and a drill sergeant walked in, the whole bay was going to get messed up for that. So like just don't be lazy and just like wear what you're being regs, you know, have your hair tied back. Um, females like, females and males like to flirt a lot. How you doing? Too. I'm not just gonna put this on one or the other. Everyone flirts. Don't females don't get caught by a female drill sergeant flirting or looking flirtatious or fraternizing or whatever they want to call it with a male because that will get the females, all the females, messed up really, really quick. So don't screw anyone over like that. Just do what you're supposed to do and everything will go a lot easier. Um, SHARP and EO or Equal Opportunity. SHARP is, stands for um, Sexual Harassment uh, and then EO is Equal Opportunity. So you can file um, a open up a case about sexual harassment or Equal Opportunity. They will have a briefing on this a couple times when you get there and they'll explain who's in charge of EO and who's in charge of SHARP. Usually it's one of the drill sergeants and um, you can go to them um, in private sometimes and tell them what's happened. Um, sometimes they'll let you talk to them without a battle buddy because you don't want other people to hear what's been reported and you don't want to like catch any of the backlash on that. So that's good. There is some privacy there, especially with EO. Um, there was a lot of talk about race um, in our company. There was a lot of like slang words used that you actually cannot use in the military whatsoever. Um, so a lot of like EO cases were opened up about that. Um, and then bullying is also another thing that EO is opened up about. The military, guys I'm not even kidding, the military has a zero tolerance policy on bullying. You cannot go into basic training or any type of military training at all, any type of school or whatever, and think that you're going to come out on top because you're bullying people or you're blackmailing them or you're manipulative or something like that because someone will tell, your battle buddies will tell on you and you'll get caught. And then you'll either get recycled or you'll get chaptered out. And if you're chaptered out for bullying, you cannot rejoin is like the last thing I heard on that. Um, and we got to week nine and I want to say four people in our company got caught out for serious bullying um, and they were sent home. They were kicked out of the army. Um, I didn't feel bad for them either because they were bulls the whole time and, and they knew it and everybody else knew it. And so I think the drills were just waiting for someone to pipe up and say something. and. I don't know when something was said. I don't know if the drills uh, let them go through most of the training first and then called them out on it. So they had to do all that work and they still didn't get to graduate. I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. I don't know how long the case takes to open up or anything like that. Don't be mean to people. Like help them out. Um, I, like everyone comes from different places. Um, if you come from a, a home where that's like normal to act and treat people like dirt, then that's really sorry but you can't act like that in the workplace so don't do that because uh, it won't end good um, so next I'm gonna talk about FTX gas chamber grenades I was, like we got grenades and weapons call so I did get to go on FTX uh, I went I went on the last FTX that we did I think we did two or three of them uh, one lasts just like one day and then I think one lasts for like two nights 
um, like two days and two nights, and then I think the third one we were there for like three nights, three or four nights maybe. I could be wrong. I also got there late because I had a lot of like hospital appointments and stuff like that. Um, but they took us out there because during FTX, no one's at the company. Um, like all the drills and everyone are at FTX. The company commander comes out to FTX with y'all. Um, everyone's out there. So no one stays at the company. So everyone that's like having like medical issues, anyone who's a holdover, anyone who's getting kicked out for whatever, they're not training, they're not like a trainee anymore. They're still going to go to FTX with, with uh, everyone who is training. Um, but I actually enjoyed it. I was on crutches. <laughs> Um, and I was on bed rest. I was on like the, the little green cots that you see. Um, but like I really enjoyed it. It was probably 20, 30 degrees while we were out there in February um, doing FTX and like tactics and stuff. But it was really cool. They did a lot of like uh, like night raids. The drills would come out and like shoot up the like little huts that we were staying in. Um, and then everyone would have to like scramble and like get on their uniforms, put their boots on, uh, and like be in regs and then go out with their weapon and like do tactics and do like formations and stuff like that and um, basically go head to head with like the drills. So you get to practice what you've been learning um, at your company when FTX comes around. So that's really cool. And you we got trans like they all got transported out there um by like a big bus and then sometimes they'll make you ruck back for the 12k um but i think in our case uh we got transported back and they did the 12k later so FTX is really cool there's um smoke grenades there's um you have blanks that you're firing. Um, there's not live rounds, obviously that'd be super dangerous. You have blanks that you're firing. Um, it was okay. I felt a little catered to compared to like what my husband had to go through in the field. We had porta potties. We had like little like structures to sleep in. I mean, we were sleeping like on a cement slab, but we had like our sleeping system that they gave us um, and like a little pads to sleep on. Um, I don't know, it was a lot nicer than, uh, what my husband went through in the infantry and then act, his actual duty station too at Fort Campbell. Um, so when they went out in the fields, they would just be like sleeping out in the woods. They didn't have porta potties like, they'd be up all night, there would be like choppers flying around everywhere, so, um, we got lucky with that. Um, gas chamber, I did not get to go to the gas chamber. That happened right after I was diagnosed with my hip fracture. So I was really jealous. Um, but I saw the pictures and I talked to people afterwards and they said it wasn't too bad. Why are you always lying? Um, I did do my gas mask. They gave us our gas mask before I even like fractured my hip. So they definitely go over it with you a couple times before you go to the chamber because they want to make sure that um, you really you know what you're doing. And then if you still don't know after their lessons, just ask someone. Um, ask one of your battle buddies. Don't ask your drill sergeant. Just ask a battle buddy, and and they should be able to help you out. Um, but like it's not really anything to be nervous about. Um, I heard that it like stings your skin a little bit around your neck. Um, you break your seal when you get in there. Um, just get yourself kind of like uh, give you like a, a like a tester of what it's gonna be like. Then you reseal it. Um, so you're like okay, like you kind of know what to expect. And then they ask you to take your mask off completely. And I don't know what they asked him to say. I know it's like part of the soldier's creed or the army song or something you like know already or you should know by then um and then i think once everyone's done you head out in a single file line and you like flap your arms um you're breathing you you can't touch your face though like nothing like that but a lot of people are like drooling they're coughing they've got snot coming out their nose and stuff like that that's just like your body trying to like get everything out um, but all in all, it wasn't too bad. They let you come back to the company right after that and take a shower. You have like hygiene time, change out of your um, your OCPs and everything that has like gas on it. So that's fine. Um, 
Grenades. I think grenades went really well for everyone. I didn't do grenades either. This was like later on in our training, so I was still on crutches. Um, but grenades went well. You just stand behind a wall and you just like chuck it over um, like a certain point and you like duck down and that's grenades. <laughs> um, weapons call. We did a lot of weapons training. I did, You get your weapon like day three, or at least we did. And I was like, oh, I don't trust any of these crazy people around me to have a weapon. They don't give you any ammo. It's not like that. Um, <clears throat> you just have your weapon and you're just carrying it around. It's completely empty. There's no access to any ammo anywhere. Um, so it's, it's safe. Um, you practice on uh, doing like a weapons check for your first test. I did do... I did my first red face test on crutches. I had just gotten on crutches and I didn't know if I had like pulled a um, hip flexor or what, but I was on crutches and so I went ahead and did my red face test. I passed. I did really good. Um, and you do your weapons check. Weapons check was probably like the hardest thing for me to remember. I, like I knew how to address um, officers. I knew how to do any kind of like uh, uh, aid, like medic stuff that they had taught us like the week before what else did we do like I don't even know there's a couple other things that you have to do but I did fine on everything um, except for I did pass weapons and in, uh, inspection but like or weapons check but it was hard so um, I don't know why but like the steps were just hard for me to remember um, you can go through once and if you fail something they'll check it off as you didn't pass and so then you go to see one of the specific drills that's assigned to that portion of the test and they'll go over that stuff with you so that you do understand and you can go back that same day and retake that portion of the test with a, a different drill sergeant um, to, so they make sure you pass. I think you can do that. I think you have two tries and then on your third one if you fail it again then you just fail that section. And I think if you fail like two out of like the six things that you're tested over, then obviously you fail. Um, but I don't really know how that works. We had one guy that uh, failed one section out of the whole company. One guy that just failed one portion of the test. So he still passed. But um, I think if you fail like any like phase test, they might give you another chance to make it up at the end. Um, that's like a secret. Like they don't, they like don't even go sharing that information once you get to basic training because they don't want you to know that. They don't want anybody else to know that. So, um, but like don't freak if you fail something. Like they don't want you to stay at basic training. They, <laughs> they hate y'all already. Like <laughs> they don't want you to stay. So, um, if you fail something, it's okay. You're probably going to be able to make it up at the end. Um, and then weapons qual as well, like, uh, they had, um, a couple people fail their weapons qual and then, like, towards the end, right before graduation, they let them go in with another company when that company was doing weapons qual and qualify with that company. So, don't stress over any of that stuff. Um, rucking, uh, I went on one ruck at the very beginning before I got hurt. And I think it was only like two or three miles, maybe it wasn't it wasn't really far. Um, but hopefully by then you've been wearing the same pair of boots that I suggested in the last video, and they've been broken in a little bit. Um, I used mole skins, and then I used I put a lot of powder in my boots. And the more powder you put, the better, because that keeps your feet from sweating, and that keeps your skin from getting wet or moist, and then it keeps it from forming blisters or tearing. So you really want to take really good care of your feet. Um, especially on the last ruck, they stopped and I think they made everyone change their socks out at least. So um, foot care is really important. So make sure you're, you're doing that correctly um, before your rucks. And you'll know, like, if you're doing something like FTX or you're going to weapons qual or you're going on a rock or you're going to to aid or whatever to learn you'll know at least the night before so you can kind of like mentally prepare a little bit um, 
you can hydrate a little extra um, and then you can make sure that your rack is squared away and stuff like that. We did like practice like mini racks to get us conditioned. So we rucked to aid, which was, I don't know, like maybe like a mile. Um, it seems forever when you're rucking, but it's really not that far. You just kind of have to like pace your breathing, almost like you're running or jogging. So, um, but that was okay. Make sure your ruck is tied up. Um, tape up any of the like loose like straps hanging down. You want everything to be like squared away and like looking sharp. So um, tape up any of like the loose straps hanging down. Make sure your frame is sitting up higher on your back. And you'll know what I mean when I say frame once you get your ruck. But there's a plastic frame that sits on the back of it. Um, always, they'll, they'll for the most part like teach you how to pack your ruck. Um, I put everything that was really heavy on the top. Um, because if you have everything like your boots and your ACH on the bottom, it pulls you backwards, right? Just like your backpack at school, it's going to pull you, your back and it's going to arch your back and then that's just going to kill you. So, um, there's a lot of straps. There's a, there's a hip strap, like, like thick band that goes all the way around your hip bones that, that clicks and you can tighten that. There's, um, a chest strap that clicks right here and you can tighten that. And then you have your shoulder pads here that you can tighten. I had all my stuff pretty tight um, because I didn't want anything sliding around. That causes a lot of back soreness too and back pain. Um, and then I, you can adjust how your ruck sits on its frame. So I had my ruck, like this is the frame, my ruck was pulled like upwards, up towards like the back of my neck almost. Um, anyone who like looks like they're struggling with like your drill will be there like telling you how to do all this stuff but if someone's struggling with how to like adju like adjusting their ruck just help them out um all these rucks have been used before so they're broken and my frame was broken on mine but it didn't really affect anything so just keep that in mind um keep your ruck looking nice um and you should be you should be okay um getting your gear so you get more gear after you get to basic training. Um, we went to like this little, I don't even know, it was like this old like building right next to like railroad tracks. So I knew that that had been there for forever because there weren't any trains running through there anymore. Um, but it was just this little building and they had a bunch of civilians working in there and that's where you got um, like all your wet weather gear. Um, you got like your canteen. Uh, what else did we get? Uh, there's a there's a couple other things that you get uh, while you're there, but you do get more gear after your all your issued stuff once you get to BCT. That gear that you get while you're at BCT, um, you're gonna have to turn back in at some point at the end of your career. So take care of that stuff. Don't beat it up in basic training and then just like think that it'll be okay like take care of your stuff make sure your pins don't um bleed ink all over your wet weather gear um you know like you get your all weather coat that you'll be wearing like if it's raining one day or if it's really cold um or for us it was both it was like sleeting one day um take care of that don't write your name on that stuff because that's the stuff you're going to turn back in. If it's got your name, like in big sharpie letters across the top of it, they're not going to want it. So, and you have to pay for that. Any kind of like gear that you mess up that's getting turned back in, you have to pay for it. Go ahead and ask your drill sergeant when you get there, after you've gotten all your gear, like what is going to be turned back in. Um, and make sure that you like definitely take care of it. So, that's a big thing that like they didn't really tell us until it was time for us to like, go to AIT. So, just be careful with that. Um, I don't know, I think that pretty much covers um, BCT for the most part. Uh, I don't know if I want to get into like the female drama or not. Okay, I'll just talk about the female drama really quick. So, the males, most of the males that I came in contact with, I spoke with like briefly um, or got to know, were really polite. Um, I'll talk about the males really quick for a second. Most of the males are really polite. They're really afraid to get a sharp complaint. <laughs> so 
usually they're pretty nice to you. Um, they talk to you just like a normal person. It's not like this weird, like, just because Sharp is there doesn't mean that, like, you can't talk to guys. Um, they're, like, essentially like your teammates, and you're all supposed to be, like, you're at work right now, and you're supposed to be a professional. So if their attitude is anything but professional, then that's when it turns into a problem. Um, there were a lot of guys who I caught, some of them were not saying nice things about females. They were trying to hit on females. They were asking some other girls like what so-and-so looked like naked in the shower. Um, just really inappropriate things that you don't say ever, whether you're at work or not. Um, but in this case you are and you're constantly told that you need to act like a professional. For some people that's really hard to do for some reason. Um, I don't know if it was because they had just come out of high school. I don't know if it's because they never held a real job before. Um, but whatever the case may be, like you have to act professional. So um, if you hear a male talking about a female or they're being inappropriate or whatever, um, I had to like just either call them out on it and tell them to like shut up or and if they keep talking back to you about it that's when you need to go and address that with someone if it's like some really serious go and tell a drill sergeant with a battle buddy um, and someone who was like there and they just saw what happened so they can back you up on it um, but I wouldn't do that unless it was really serious um, but if it is if it's like something that causes you to feel really uncomfortable around them or like your safety or whatever you need that's you know, that's something that you need to go talk to a drill sergeant about. Um, female drama was pretty bad. Uh, I think um, every female uh, like group that goes into BCT at a company gets a lot of drama. Um, it's been like that for females since like day one. All through school, I remember lots of drama happening. Um, college, there was even some drama. Um, I, I don't know, I guess that's just how females are. Like I said earlier, these females that come into the army uh, usually have a pretty strong attitude. I have a strong attitude. Um, I'm very forward um, and I can be a little too outspoken sometimes. So I think this process taught me how to like tone it down a little bit and only voice my opinion when it's really needed or if someone asks for it. Um, but a lot of females wanted to catch an attitude with the drills. Um, we had one female drill in particular, I won't say names on here, but this female drill did not play. <laughs> um, she would get in your in your face if uh, she thought there was a problem with an attitude. And 100% of the time she was right. They were given her attitude 100% of the time. Um, and they won't get in your face unless they really need to because it's just more work for them. But there was eye rolling going on. There was like the tone in her voice had changed. Um, she wasn't doing what she was supposed to be doing or whatever the case may be. She was fraternizing with another guy. She was flirting. You know, she had like her, her arm like propped up against the wall like with her hip out like talking to this guy. Don't ever do that. Um, never lean on anything in the military ever in training. Don't lean on walls, don't lean on poles, nothing. Just stand there, don't touch the, the walls around you because that's a really bad thing too, by the way. Um, but yeah, females, uh, they want to fight each other. They were like twerking in the bays. Uh, they were beating on lockers. Um, they were getting up like an hour before lights on to get ready. That really pissed me off personally um, because everyone in the bay can hear you because the lockers are metal and they're really loud. Um, and people are just being like really uh, like not thinking about others when, and they're being really selfish. Um, females would like run around the kill zone in the bays. Why are you running? Why are you running? Um, or in our female bay sometimes and that didn't bother me personally. 
um, because they were pretty quiet. I mean, it was just like tennis shoes. They were barely making any noise. Um, and I slept with my ear pro in. You get ear pro at reception, hang on to that. You'll need it for um, all your weapons training. But I slept with them in every night because I just, little sounds irritate me. So that might be another trick for y'all to use. Just or pack um, ear plugs uh, from home, whatever, if you're worried about losing your ear pro. Um, you have to have your ear pro for AITT. You can't, you can't lose those. Um, but yeah, like there were just people that weren't, they were being really selfish and still thinking like a civilian and that caught up to them eventually and people started ratting them out about things. Um, and then it got to the point where we could only get up like 10, maybe 15 minutes before lights on and then it would be really super crowded and crazy busy in the latrine because that's the only place you could change clothes. So just like be polite and be considerate of others um if you do have to get up in the middle of the night like don't let the doors slam behind you um from the latrine like don't shine your flashlight in people's eyes that ears hit out of me um just just like common sense stuff like just don't be annoying um don't ask stupid questions i'm sure i already said that once but don't ask stupid questions either just ask about a buddy don't ask your drill sergeant nothing um what else? Uh, lots of things ended up getting stolen. I know towards the end there, there was someone in our bay that had at least $400 cash that they had stolen from everyone else. And you're only supposed to take $50 cash, um, like up to $50 cash, no more than. Um, and they were like stealing people's money, so you do the math. Uh, but they had at least, like by the time we had figured out like how much each person had lost they had up to at least like four hundred dollars cash that they had stolen um yes i needed to talk about uh securing your stuff so when you are packing for bct um you'll need to buy just buy like locks just buy at least four locks uh whatever kind of lock you want i was told not to get the cute like color ones like the pink or purple ones or whatever um, but the drills never made a big deal about that. And, I mean, there were a couple of girls that had like the really cool like slide locks and everything. Whatever you need, just make sure it freaking locks and make sure you know the combinations. Also, just like, you know, if you feel like being really sweet, you can like give someone one of yours that you don't need. Um, a female that we didn't really get along that well, but she's in my platoon and like we, we had to help each other out. Um, because that's what all this is about, but she, uh, I had one of mine ripped off my uh, locker because my locker wasn't secure, and she gave me one of her extras and she told me a combination, so that was really, really sweet. Um, but yeah, just like help people out like that. Uh, the night that it got really bad and we realized that we really do have to start securing our stuff was when Probably the toughest drill sergeant in our company came up late in the middle of the night and checked everyone's locks. Um, so you have your bunk locker that your mattress sits on top of, um, and then you have your wall locker. So we got like the nice brand new bunks. Um, a lot of people's stuff wasn't secure. They had left their locks like completely unlocked, and so he took all the locks and locked them together in a huge ball um and then we all got called down there lights came on um it's just like such a nightmare just thinking about it <laughs> um they come over the loudspeaker um like you're like you're like in like back in like high school or whatever they come over the loudspeaker and they tell you to get your downstairs it's like a whole company um and when you hear that person come on the loudspeaker and it's lights out you know that you're just gonna have a bad night so i'm in the process of rejoining right now and i'm not looking forward to that again but it's part of it um so secure your stuff we had to stand there all night until everyone got their locks unlocked and he did a, a ball for the males and a ball for the females um and we were separated in the two classrooms downstairs so the females literally had to pass that ball around if they even had like a slight feeling they had left their stuff unlocked and try the try the combination on each lock we could 
before we had to like stand there holding our weapons up over our heads for like another like five minutes or something. Um, they get really creative there. So lock your Also initial your locks. So like I had EK written on the back of all of my locks. So if that were to happen again for some reason I ran to the latrine and a drill walked in and found my thing unlocked while I was in the bathroom. Um, I could flip it over and I could see, okay, this one's my lock, do my combination and take it off. Um, and eventually I just passed around a Sharpie and everyone did that for our female bay. So uh, we got kind of smart with that one. Um, but yeah, people started losing money because they still weren't securing their shit. It was like week nine. So, I mean, some people will learn and some people won't. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for y'all. I'm sorry if this video is like super freaking long. Um, but it is BCT and it is like what everyone has questions about. So hopefully this helped y'all out. Um, and then I'll be posting a video about how to impress your drill sergeants. And then probably about like, my whole medical situation in the army as well. Um, how I got out and how I'm going back in. So yeah, thanks for tuning in and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.